lunch and dinner and had a great time visiting. Amen. Me and my wife made it home safe Amen. and uh, I'm just thankful for that. Amen? Amen. Now you say, well, why did you go? Why did you go up there? Because they was FaceTiming my wife and the granddaughters kept saying, oh please grandma, please come. We haven't seen you in so long. Please grandma. So we had to go. Come on, Grandmas, give me an amen. I'll be gone amen. one way or the other. <laughs> oh, if I had to drive, I would have been. We, we do, we do <laughs> miss grandbabies, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Love them grandbabies. Now, I started a series on Wednesday night in James, and I'm going to preach again in James this morning. Amen. And I think God has given me the message for the hour. Amen. The amen. For today. Now, if you smell food when you come in church, that's because this is pastor appreciation meal. Amen. And everybody's invited to stay and eat with us. Yeah. We got all kind of good stuff, yes, desserts, food of all kinds. And so you just, you say, well, we didn't plan. We didn't plan. Stay and eat with us. Amen. Anyway. Is there any chicken and dumplings back there? Oh man, I just knew there was going to be chicken and no. no, And uh, so, uh, if, if you don't usually stay for our dinners, you have a personal invitation. It's my day. I'm the pastor. It's Pastor Appreciation Day. And Sister Scouts. And I give you an invite to stay and eat dinner with us. Amen. Amen. You can fill your plate up as full as you want it. You can eat all you want. You can eat dessert. And then you can fellowship for a little bit. Amen. But here's my question. Everybody listen to me. Because I'm not going to vote for this and show up. Me be the only one here. Tonight's service. Because we'll have to turn the water off. we we'll have to turn the water back on. 
And if you want to not have service and singing tonight, we usually have the singing, let me know. That's a good idea. And everybody in favor of not having service tonight? That's right. Okay, it, it looks like it's a pretty good vote. So no service tonight, not because we don't want to be here. I always want to be here, but uh, we don't want to waste a whole lot of water. And uh, we, we would waste water from 6 till about 7.30. And uh, so we don't want to waste that much water if we can keep from it. Come back Wednesday expecting God. Hopefully it'll be fixed. And uh, if not, we'll shut the water off. We'll have Wednesday night service. And uh, so now, guess what we're going to do? We're going to receive an offering. Amen. Amen. Your tithe and offering, which Amen. is given to God. Thank you, Father, for blessing us this week. We pray that you would have your way in our lives today. We pray that you would minister to the needs of the church as we give back to you to be put in the storehouse, that the storehouse may be full. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting ready to leave this world. Yes, amen. And that's on page 16. One sixteen. One sixteen. Laying up my treasures in that old Yeah. 
my meal coordinator, and uh, she made sure all this food got here. And let's give Sister Renee a big hand for doing all that for us. And all, all the cooks we've got in this yeah, church, we, uh, we got some wonderful cooks. Amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. She works hard. Good singing. Hey, good singing, God. Hallelujah. Sister Styles, greet you folks. I know you're happy to be here. How's your ankle doing? I'm on it. <laughs> I, I, I'm wearing my boots. I got to go see the specialist on the 16th of November. So, I love the Lord today, and I thank you because he makes a way where there seems yeah. to be no way sometimes. Amen. And, you know, it's up to us to do our part. And sometimes we have to listen to what the doctor says. I'm not real good at that. I would prefer to do things my way. But you know what? When you're bought with a price, yeah. with the shed blood of Calvary, we're not our own anymore. We don't get to make those choices. We have to do what the Word says. We have to live what the Word says. And you know, if you, uh, I didn't dream that I broke my ankle. But then I had these strange little bruises on the inside, and they weren't round like I've seen. They were straight across on both sides, inside and outside of my ankle. Then I had one coming up my shin about that far, and I thought, well, what in the world? It's broken. <laughs> and oh, I said, God. well, all right, you know. And, and I decided I wasn't going to let it stop me. And so I wish y'all could have seen us Sunday night getting in the house after the service. And after the the rain, it started and it was the splotches on the windshield were like this big around. They were huge. And then we pulled in the driveway and it began to hail. And I said, oh, Lord, now come on. I, don't let it hail. Just let it stop. If it's going to rain, that's okay. You know, you can get along with some of it. And... Uh, when Mr. Scott, and we had ordered a pizza. So we were going to go home and eat pizza. And we got there and it was just pouring down. And he goes, well, I'm going to go ahead and run and open the door. And I said, okay. And so we got the little part off of the roof, you know. So he had to run. It looked like a waterfall. And I said, well, Lord, you give thanks and all things. So I thank you for the rain and the waterfall we've got. And so I sat there a little bit, and I had my Coke in one hand, and my drink, and my water in the other hand, and my purse, and I thought, well, I just will go on in the house. And I thought, you know, the enemy said, ah, oh, you're going to fall. You'll, you'll fall. You'll slip going up that concrete with that boot thing on. You'll, you're going to fall and break something else. And I sat there, and I said, oh. No, I'm not in the name of Jesus. And I opened the door and away I went. And here I was going up through there and I looked like a drowned rat by the time I got in there. And my hair was just flat down on my head. My clothes was, I left, we left trails, didn't we, honey? And you know what? I made it in there and I didn't fall. And I said, see, devil, you're a liar. Amen. And sometimes we just have to do that. We have to take our authority. And we don't have to live in fear of what he's going to do to us because greater is he that is within me, Amen. oh, hallelujah, Amen. than he that is in the world. And I thank him because I got him right here. And I thank him because he's living in my heart. I'm thankful that I know who he is. And I'm even more thankful that he knows who I am. And he loves me. And he accepts me with all my shortcomings and my quirks and all that. But you know what? He loves me anyway, and I'm so thankful for that. He said, yeah, well, you got a broke ankle, so? It could have been a whole lot worse. I could have broke my leg and cracked my knees and not been able to move or walk at all. But, you know, but God, hallelujah. That's right. And I'm thankful in all things today. Praise I love God. Hallelujah. Praise God. 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 Praise God
Now, we don't celebrate Halloween. No. No, we don't. We just no. don't do it. No. You say, why? Well, because there's a lot of demons and stuff. Evil. It's evil. And uh, now, I'm not against getting candy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Okay. But every Halloween, I preach a sermon entitled, Take Off Your Mask. And I'm just going to give you the condensed version of that real quick before I preach to you this morning. David sent his wife to the prophet. He said, disguise yourself so nobody will know who you are. And she disguises herself and she makes it past the townspeople, the people in the street, nobody recognizes mm -hmm. her. And she gets to the prophet's house and steps on his steps. And the prophet says, come in, wife of the king. Yeah. <laughs> and he was nearly blind. And so the whole thought of the message is you can't disguise nothing God. No, you can't. No, you can't. So stop trying. Come on. Now that's Thank a mini, you, mini sermon inside of my main sermon. Amen. Come on. You may want to write that down and preach that one of these days. Amen. That's a good sermon to preach on Halloween. Take off your mask. Amen. Turn with me to the book of James. Don't stand up yet. Wait a second. I want you to know that the day and place that this was written, it was written in AD, 60, 80, 60 years after the death of Christ. It was written in Babylon. The author of the book of James was not James, it's Peter. Peter wrote the book of James. Come on. Well, I thought James, do some research. It's Peter. Peter wrote and if you just listen to the writing, you'll figure it out. Well, that's Peter. And because the writing is so good. Amen. And he was a uh, doctor. So he, he knew how to write. The theme is to exhort believers. Now listen, this is the whole theme of the book. Mm -hmm. To stand true in all kinds of suffering. Amen. <laughs> I think it says in James, and I'm going to read it in a minute, that the trying of your faith yep. brings perfection. And if you'll read, I'm not going to read it today, but if you'll read chapter 5 of the book of James, suffering is mentioned 16 times in chapter 5. So I think it's a theme or message coming through what James was trying to say. Now stand with me with, and turn to James 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greetings. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Did you get what I just said? Mm -hmm. Ask in faith, Nothing wavering. Ask in faith, nothing wavering. Yeah. But let him that ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not the man thinketh that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let thy brother of low degree, low degree 
rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth. The grass and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of fashion of the and it of it perish. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. And don't miss verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Amen. Now there's some preaching in that yes, few scriptures amen. I just read. Now God, I pray that you would touch us this morning. God, we pray that you would minister in the name that is above every name right now. Bless glad tidings today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen and amen. You may be seated. Now, I want to tell you the hardest thing for me to do is preach when I can smell food in the next room. That's why we need a new kitchen now. Come on, we need to amen. build a new kitchen somewhere. No <laughs> can't smell the food cooking because it's, it's hard. Good. My stomach goes to growling. Come on, be honest. Good. You're burning daylight. I'm burning daylight. Oh, I said that's an old John Wayne saying. See your battle as a gate to promotion. When, when you're tried, don't get mad at God because you got to go through some no. struggles in your life because you feel like uh, you're the only one on earth. Some of y'all feel like you like you. I'm the only one left. But God said, I've got 4,000 and had not bowed a knee. Come on. Yeah. And you need to understand that. No matter what you face, no matter what your battle is, do it. It could be a gate for the opening of a promotion for you. Amen. Amen. Can I obey God? Yeah. Will you let me, George, before you sit down, I want you to come here. God, come here. God spoke to me to tell you something. I think about Monday. And you, you, you didn't show up here Wednesday, all right? And so I, I want to tell you in front of the church and everybody. God said to tell you that you were so faithful in taking care of your mother, and you were so faithful. About taking care of your wife when your stepdaughter passed away. And he said, You've been so faithful that, that you took care of your grandpa until God took him home. And God said to tell you that you're a champion in his eyes. And don't you ever forget that. God has smiled on your life. And not to never forget what I'm telling you. Day. God says you're a man that takes care of people. And he wants you to know that. Amen. Go with God, my friend. Go with God, my friend. I have three others. That's what God told me to do. All right. See your battles as promotion. Whenever you go through things, don't get discouraged. Because the trying of a battle you may go through may be the next door you step through to victory. Amen? Yeah, come on. God promotes people okay. when he sees that they've been faithful. Amen? Amen. That they've been faithful. Yes. We've been watching George around here for five years of the things that he's done. Yeah. And how he took care of his mother through cancer and how he took care of his wife. And God said, you got to tell him this. Yeah. Let him know that he's a champion in my eyes. Amen. So that's the reason I've done that. And it fits in this sermon. Yes, it, Amen. it fits perfect in this sermon that I'm preaching. 
Did he get discouraged? Yes. Sure. Did he have times of sadness? Yes. yes. Did he worry and fret? Yes. yes. That, that, that's what we do as human beings. Yep. But he severed through the storms. And he made it through the storms. And he's still here. And he came to church this morning. Amen. So God's smiling down on George today. I'm going to tell you right now. Amen. So understand. Warfare may appear to be on an obstacle to us. However, God will use it to promote you to your next promotion. Yes, amen. amen. So don't get discouraged. Amen. You think I didn't get discouraged? I've been to the doctor so many times and left thinking, my Lord, don't they know God? Hello? Your lungs are bad, your diabetes is bad, your heart's bad. That was a liar. You got to understand that. And every time when I leave and I feel like I get a bad report, you know what I do? I sing praises all the way to the house. Amen. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, that you're able to fix this. Amen. Thank you, God, that you're going to help me through it. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Now you say, do you really believe? Yes. I'm going to prove something to you this morning. I'm going to tell you right now. Do you believe that when you go through trials, it's just a step before a promotion? Yeah, I really do. Strength. You may not see it. Amen. A lot of people don't see their promotion, but I do. I see Christian people that just grow. Every time they're, they're tried, they grow, and they get stronger in the Lord. They start reading their Bible more. They get more faithful to God. Amen. And we have to do that as Christians. First person I want to talk to you about is Daniel. Daniel was told, don't pray no more. It had been signed by the king. It was law in the land. Don't pray no more. But you know what Daniel did? He opened all the windows and all the doors and he faced toward Jerusalem and he prayed. <laughs> Come on. You say, well, what happened to them? You know, you know. Now, these stories that I'm telling you is not a parable. Come on. Come on. You, you know, Jesus told a lot of parables. This is not a parable. No. This is the history of Israel. Amen. Did you know if you go to Washington and you go into the uh, some of those museums they got up there, they got George Washington's boots and his coat. And this is America's history. Yeah. When we became a nation Foundation. and started with 13 colonies and from that, we got 52 states. What? It's our history. <laughs> what did I say? 52. It's 50. 50. 50. <laughs> See, that's faith. I'm agreeing for two more states. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to water some of this. I just wanted to see if y'all were listening. <laughs> Amen. And that is our history. They got things from Benjamin Franklin, some of the founders of our nation, the writers of the uh, independence, uh, the, 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 what am I trying to, declarations of independence, the, the guys that wrote it. They got glasses of Benjamin Franklin up there and all these things, amen? And that's our history. This is the history of Israel. Yeah, amen. And Daniel would pray. Yes. He was not ashamed to pray. No, sir. That's right. And they came and got him and put him in a lion's den. Mm -hmm. Come on. Hello? So what? Now, I've heard preachers say, well, uh, they made Daniel smell bad so the lions wouldn't eat him. 
No. no. You ain't read the book. You no. think that. The Bible said that God came down and shut the lion's mouth. That's right. That's right. So they couldn't even open their mouths. Yeah. That's right. And I think when the king went back there, he looked in, and I think this is my opinion. I'm just Ed Styles, and I've got a vivid imagination. Yes, you do. And I can see Daniel laying. Fluffing up one of them lion's manes and just leaning over, just sleeping. Amen. 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 Yep. You say, well, what happened to Daniel after that? He was promoted. Come on. Amen. He went through that and God promoted him. Yes, he Amen. You can read, if you will, about Job. Come on. This is history. Yeah. If you don't know this, Job was the first. And the oldest book of the Bible. Yep. Yep. Written before Genesis. Look it up. It's the oldest written book of the Bible. Amen. And in that book you'll find out that Job lost everything. Come on. All he had was three friends that were just iffy friends. And a wife, and this is what I've always said, she probably had a big insurance policy on him. Because she told him, why don't you curse God and die? And I'll go on and live with this, you know. Come on. Curse God and die. But Job helped out to the end. Amen. Job, you say, what is it? This is part of of the Israeli history. Amen. It's their heritage. This happened. And Job ended up at the end of his life with everything given back to him and even more than what he had in the beginning. And God blessed him and promoted him and said, because you've been faithful. And one songwriter said it better than I've ever heard about Job. He said, Job said, though God slay me, yet I'll trust him and I will then come forth like gold. For I know that he still liveth. For I feel him in my soul. Amen. God promoted him through his trials and struggles. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you about Joseph. Amen. Come on Joseph started out in a pit. Wouldn't it be trying for you to be in a pit? How would you like for your kinfolk to get you one morning and stick you down in a big hole and tell you to stay there till we decide what we're going to do with you. And here was Joseph down in this hole. Looking up, I don't know what we're going to do. And then they lied to their dad. Uh -huh. They took his coat, which Jacob knew about the coat. Because yeah. he had the coat made or he made it. And they put animal blood all over it. They went and told their dad, oh, some animal got him, he's dead. Come on. I'm going to tell you, you don't kill God's people, amen. That's right. That's right. You say, well, what did he do? Well, some people came by and they got him out of the pit. He was sold into slavery. Amen. Yep. And he was sold to the house of Potiphar. And Potiphar's wife got to kind of over look at him. He's got a lot better looking than my husband. Come on. Now, Potiphar's wife was, was really an ornery old gal, if you'll excuse, excuse the expression. That's an understatement. She got the lusting. That's right, she did. She got the lusting after this young man. And 
You know, he's always got. Now, that there's a message in there somewhere about Joseph. He's always losing his coat. Now, there's a message there. So I'm about to do some research on that. That just came to me. Holy Ghost just brought that to me. That was divine. And she grabbed Joseph by the arm. And she said, come on, boy, lay down with me. You know what Joseph did? He took off front and left his coat behind and ran. You said, what happened to Joseph? He got put in prison. They falsely accused him and put him in prison. And while he was in prison, he interpreted some dreams. Yeah. I'm talking in the pit, assaulted. Now he's in prison. You think Joseph didn't go through a few trials in his life? Come on. Yeah. And you say, well, pastor, what happened to Joseph? He became second in command of all of Egypt. Amen. You see, when you go through trials, it's just a gateway to a promotion. Amen. Stand faithful. Amen. Be true to God. Right. Don't give up. Amen. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you need to determine in your heart that the Spirit of God is going to raise up a standard against it, no matter what it is. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Boy, I'm glad I come to church. I didn't know pastors going to preach this good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Lord. My last point is don't run from the battle. Amen. Amen. Don't run no. from the battle. No. We got too many people that tuck tail and run. You have to understand the devil was defeated at Calvary. Yes, he was. <clears throat> he no longer has any power. Only thing he can do is mess with people's minds. That's right. He does it well. Have, have any of y'all ever read the book when you was in school? The Red Badge of Courage, was it called? Yeah. You ever read that book? Yeah. And it, it is it is it just intrigued me when I read it. And then I watched the movie. And there's been several, several movies made about the Red Badge of Courage. My favorite is the one starring Audie Murphy. Audie Murphy was just a young actor. And if you read the book, you'll find out that he was scared, didn't want to fight, didn't know what to do. He was just a young soldier. And they got in the heat of a battle. And people started falling around him. And he finally just, just took off fighting. Come on. He took off fighting. Read the book. And man, it, it, it is an inspiring book. He took off fighting. Now here's the catch. You know who Audie Murphy was? Yeah. Audie Murphy was the most decorated soldier of World War II. Oh, no. Amen. Yes, he was. He was decorated more than any other soldier. And the funny part about it, he wasn't but about five foot seven. I've been to his grave at yeah. Arlington National Cemetery. Yes. You said, well, where is it at? You go to the tomb of the unknown soldier and it's facing this way, the stage, Go behind that, within, what, 20, 30 feet of the sidewalk, there's Audie Murphy's grave. It's the one with fresh flowers every day. Every day they put yeah. fresh flowers on it. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Do you get the, what do you always, putting out parallel? Do you get, he played this cowardly soldier to begin with. And he ended up being the most decorated soldier of World War II. Fight your battle. Don't quit in the midst of the fray. Amen? Stay around long enough for God to promote you. And he will.
take you to the next level. I forgot my mic, I'm sorry. You didn't hold up the mic. I'm gonna blame it on you. I was late. But y'all heard me all right this morning. I was kind of wired up a little bit this morning. And so, when you go through battles, and when you face obstacles, don't quit on God. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't let the devil tell you nothing can be done about your situation. Because I'm here to tell you the devil is a liar. Yes, he is. And he don't want you to be excited. But you get in the battle. Amen. You stay in the battle. I, I'm glad I'm married to one of the uh, one of the battle, great battlers of all time. She, she, she don't back up from nothing. That's right. Amen. She tells the devil every day. Now he's coming through Winslow. And she prayed for everybody in Winslow coming through yesterday. Aww. Amen. Amen. Call their names out. That's what we do. Hallelujah. Get out of there. In Jesus' name, get out. You, you, you have, you have, you have victory coming. A promotion is coming for you. That's right. Amen. You get stronger in God. Every day. Can, can I tell y'all something without sounding like I'm being braggadocious? Every district that I've ever been in, I get put on the board. Every district, I've, I've been on the board of every district I've ever been in. You say, are you on the district here in Arkansas? Yes. Not only a district president, I'm on the finance committee. Hello? You say, why are you on the finance committee? Because the 30th of every month, I make out my check for my tithe in my office. Yes, you do. That's the first thing I pay. Yes, sir. Hello? I give God his money. And I don't know if they looked at that and said, man, faithful this guy is, we need to put him on the finance committee. Maybe he'll make everybody else be as faithful. I don't know. But every job I've got is after I've had a little struggle. Sure. And I just kept fighting. Amen? Yes, kept amen. fighting. And that's what you've got to do. Thank you. you ready for a promotion? Yes, amen. I am. Get, get ready. Just stand firm. Amen. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Now, no service tonight. Remember that. I don't want to have y'all come. And I've done call brother that, that comes on Sunday night. I invited him to dinner. I said, why don't you come by and eat dinner with us? And I forgot to tell him there'll be no service Sunday night, but if he comes to dinner, we can tell him. You were good listeners today. And you know, when you pastor the greatest church in the yes. city, Amen. it's easy to be a good pastor. Did you know that? Amen. Amen. Stand in your feet. Now, who do we want to go first? Well, I'm going to talk. I'm going to have Sister Pam to pray over the meal. And then after that, I'd like the brother and sister Skiles to lead the line. And then Judy and Janie and Katie and George and Miss B. Let's start there. And Grandma Jewel and Grandma Joyce. How's that? Y'all remember all that? Yeah. Okay. Sister I remember I'm first. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. And we thank you, Lord, to be able yes. to stand. Yes. And keep standing. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for our pastors. And this is just a small small tribute to tell them thank you. Not to put them above. Oh no. Father, your name is the greatest that ever was or ever will be. Father, please keep us safe until we come again into your house. In Jesus' name. Everybody stay and eat with us. Amen. Amen. <laughs>